The path to happiness may begin wherever you are at the moment, but it may lead you to far-flung places. Designer Abby James completed her education in the UK, but found herself drawn to Africa, and thus began a journey of self-discovery. She's now based in Cape Town, and Mela went to find out how she brings joy to her soul. A day in the Burkab is punctuated by the Azan at customary intervals. And the last echoes of the Muslim call to prayer had faded away when Abby James made her way to her favourite local eatery, where she'd arranged to meet Karishma over a steaming latte. Abby James has a passion for design that extends into every realm of her life. Be it jewellery or decor, her love for design and her eye for detail adds that special something to everything she designs or curates. She also has a love affair for the Burkhaf, which she calls home and where we'll be meeting up with her today. Hi Abby. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks. So Good. lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. How did you get into design? I suppose it was always in me, I think. I was very arty at school and then I studied it for my degree and then I moved into textile design and then that led to jewelry design. This is such a cute cafe and you mentioned you know the owner. Yeah, shall I introduce you? Please. Glenn? Hi Glenn, so lovely to meet you. I love the look of your cafe. Tell me, how did it come to be? Well, growing up in Cape Town and in the, in the communities where we grew up, there was always food and what we're trying to create here was going back in time. So we cook traditional dishes, we try to spice it up and modernize it. For us really it is not to lose our heritage and to lose the culture and work up personifies that for us. Well, I'm really looking forward to tasting some of your food a little bit later. Thank you. Abby, you are very well traveled. What made you fall in love with the Burkhaf and want to call it home? I love the character of the Burkhaf. I love the cobbled streets, the houses. I love the mosques. I just love the people. I wanted a place that had character. I grew up in London and I wanted a place where it felt a bit like London, where you could walk the streets. You weren't necessarily in apartments. And for me, the Burkhaf just ticked a lot of boxes. And Krishna, I'd love to show you around. I'd love that. Let's do it. The origins of the Burkhaf can be traced back to the early 1760s when a local property developer built a number of small houses that he rented to slaves. Most of them were Muslim and the Awal Mosque was established in 1794. The emancipation of the slaves at the Cape in 1834 was celebrated by the residents painting their homes in vivid colours, a tradition that has been revived in recent times. So Abby, have you found any challenges living in the Burkhaf or do you think that you've been accepted by the community? I think that when you choose to live in Burkhaf, you've got to really get to know who your neighbours are and your community, knock on the door, get to know them, have a cup of coffee with them and then you are fully embraced. How would you describe the Burkhaf in three words? Characterful colourful and community. Does the Burkhaf influence your designs in any way? I suppose it kind of probably filters in unconsciously with colour, just the character, the textures. So Krishma, I live just around the corner. Would you like to come and see? I'd love to. Over the centuries, the Burkhaf has welcomed people from Malaysia, Indonesia, the former Ceylon and Africa. And Abby's home reflects a similarly cosmopolitan spirit. Wow, Abby, your home really is exquisite. I love all the details and layers. How did you go about decorating it? I'm a collector at heart, so I love collecting artifacts. I love collecting books from exhibitions that I might have been to. I love meeting different people along the way. My home is a sort of layer of all of those. I would love to know, what are some of your favourite pieces? In this space, definitely my super C art pieces, which are here. She's a Zimbabwe artist, but I met her in Zambia when I was working there, and I just love her art. It's a real sort of traveller, wanderlust feeling to the painting. So like this painting, she painted of Yemen when she went there. I just love the layers and the textures and collage. For me, that's why I love her work. This building, like many in the area, is steeped in history. Could you take me through some of the history within these walls? 
This building itself used to be a fez hat shop and then it's also been a fruit and vegetable market, which I love. So Krishma, I've got my design studio upstairs if you'd like to come and see it. Of course, I'd love to see it. Abby's jewellery business began as a passion project when she moved to Africa in her early 20s and then developed into what she calls a nomadic workshop as she travelled around the continent. Welcome. Karishma, this is Nontembe. Nontembe Karishma. Hi Nontembe, lovely to meet you. Hi, thank you. So Nontembe has been working with me for eight years. Abby, how did you get into jewellery design? I've always made jewellery. I used to buy beads at the market and then make jewellery and then I did a bit of jewellery design and one thing led to another and I got a brand. What do you enjoy most about it? The creative side. I love sourcing beads. I go up to different parts of Africa. We work with brassmiths in East Africa. So I love the sort of connection with people, actually, that bring the brand together and all the elements together. Your pieces are very Afrocentric. I'm so inspired by the continents. I've got books that have got tribal jewelry in them and I just love taking elements of those. And I feel because the brand is made in Africa, I want to express that in the design as well. What materials do you use to create your pieces? So we use a lot of brass like my bangles and my earrings. I source beads also from places like Ethiopia, um, Ghana, Mali, recycled glass, silver plated beads, bronze beads. So we try and use a lot of that in our designs. What do you think the world can learn from African artisans? I just think that creativity is the heartbeat of Africa. So for me, there is also just this rising of entrepreneurship with that and partnership with that. And I just love that. And it's keeping it real, it's keeping it authentic, it's still making things by hand, but having that combination. It's not the sort of drives machinery and mass production. So Krishma, I'm sure you're feeling a bit hungry. I've got a surprise downstairs, if you want to follow me. I'd love that. Abby has a flair for appreciating the inner beauty of her environment and local delights. Wow, this looks incredible and the aromas are divine. Abby, do you enjoy eating a lot of Malay cuisine? I love it. I do jewelry workshops here as well, and so we always have Cape Malay cooking for that as well. And what do you love most about it? The flavour. It's just a sort of really tasty, easy to eat curry. Abby, thank you so much for spending the morning with me. It's always such a treat to get to be a tourist in your hometown. Thanks so much for joining me. Sometimes happiness can be found right under our noses, just waiting to be rediscovered. Mm, mm. 